Statistically, Medicare recipients spend more money on medications than anything else in healthcare today. So choosing the right Part D plan is a very important decision. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do so if indeed you need to change moving into 2023. Now, in order to answer this question, do you need to change your Medicare Part D plan into 2023? we have to look at five different elements of this decision. So let's cover element number one. First off are the Part D options. In other words, how do we get our prescriptions covered? Well, there's basically only three ways in which we can do that. Number one, we can enroll in A and B, which is gonna cover um, medications that we take inpatient, outpatient. In other words, professionally administered medications. When we have that, most people get a supplemental plan that would simply then fill in the gaps that A and B did not cover. But for the meds that we take uh, on our own, these are self-administered uh, medications, we're gonna get what is called a standalone plan. Uh, these are separate from our MedSup plan. In most markets right now, we have anywhere from 15 to 25 different standalone drug plan options that are available. So that's one way you can get your self-administered plans through a standalone drug plan. The second way you can get those is if you have what is called a Medicare Advantage plan that includes a prescription drug plan. The Medicare Advantage part of uh, Advantage plan, this MA part is for the inpatient and outpatient services. The PD part is the Part D plan, uh, which is included within the Advantage plan. In other words, that Advantage company includes it, or we also use the word embeds it. So we have an embedded drug plan. So you chose what Advantage plan you want to be a part of, and then they chose the drug plan that you're going to use for your prescription meds. Now, the third way we can get uh, drugs covered, and by the way, this is not a Part D option. This is a Part D alternative, and that would be anyone who uh, served in the military, but you did not retire. You served in the military, and therefore you are eligible for uh, VA benefits, and you're aware of what those uh, benefits are. They normally have a very reasonable copay plan for your prescription drugs, and I just want you to know that if you get your meds to the VA, that's acceptable. You do not have to use either one of these two options because it is um, uh, considered to be credible coverage. That's one way. Another way, uh, if you are uh, in, you were in the military and you served our country for, say, 20, 25, 30 years, you have what's called TRICARE insurance. And once you're Medicare eligible, that is called TRICARE for life. It also has a drug component built within the TRICARE insurance. And so, again, you don't have to have a separate Part D plan. Uh, you can actually just get uh, your meds through TRICARE. Now, a lot of um, uh, uh, people who served our country in the military, either VA or TRICARE, uh, they also will use what is called an MA-only plan. Plan. And that's a Medicare Advantage plan that has a lot of perks with it. But again, they're only going to use that for in and out patient. And VA and TRICARE, of course, would be uh, where they would get their prescriptions. And then one more option, that would be if you're retired from the federal government. This is called FEHB. In the FEHB, uh, very much like the TRICARE and VA, you have a built-in way to get your prescription. So you don't have to have a Part D plan because that FEHB plan will include drug coverage. You've been using that drug coverage all your life. It could be GIHA or it could be Blue Cross Blue Shield or Aetna or Humana, but whoever you have has a drug component built within. And again, a lot of uh, federal employees will also do just an MA-only plan to take advantage of all the MA uh, um, Advantage perks and they'll get their medication through FEHB. All right, so as I teach you this today, what I'm focusing on are those of you that have Part D plans. Uh, either it's embedded with the Advantage or it's separate because you chose a Medicare supplemental plan. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, I want to invite you to go right up here and actually click on a link that will uh, allow you to watch what I call the Medicare Essentials Workshop. It's a workshop that I did that really is going to show you everything you need to know about Medicare uh, from A to Z, uh, how to enroll, when to enroll, and uh, the plan options for you. So, so go to that link and check it out. So if we're on a Part D plan that's embedded or it's separate uh, from our MedSup plan, uh, that plan is only written for one calendar year. It's January 1 to 1231. And so Medicare gives that prescription drug uh, plan the right to change anything they want to in the plan. And that's why they're required to notify you in advance uh, of what they're going to change. And that's what this ANOC means. It's the annual notice of change. Now, you should have received that annual notice of change by October 1 of this year. 
Now, if you did not get that annual notice of change, uh, pull out your drug card out of your purse or your wallet, and there will be a customer service number on there, and you can actually call them and say, hey, I did not receive my annual notice of change. Sometimes people get them and just accidentally throw them away, but you need to get into the ANOC and open it up, and you're going to look for uh, some very important features within that plan. Number one, uh, you're going to look at the premium. What is the premium uh, change, if any, from 20 to 23? And so you want to find that out. Now, I will tell you this, we have seen a couple of them already that uh, have raised their uh, premiums anywhere from 20 to 30 percent. Uh, that may be a little bit more than is really necessary for you, uh, but you need to open it up and see what the premium is going to be. If there's a couple dollar change, uh, that is not a big deal. In fact, some of the plans actually went down. I looked at a plan today, actually went down $5.70 every month moving into 2023. But first off, find out about the premium. And then secondly, <clears throat> I want to make sure that you look at the formulary. What is the formulary? In other words, are your prescriptions still covered? So if they're covered this year, are they also going to be covered uh, next year? Because the plan has the right to change the formulary. They can remove medications and they can add medications. Now for every disease um, issue, they call it a therapeutic category, there has to be two, at least two medications that are covered by the formulary. But let's say there's eight or ten medications that would treat that, uh, that uh, disease or that illness. Uh, not all of those have to be in formula. It just has to be two. And so the plants can actually decide uh, which meds they want to be in the formulary. And again, if they're low-cost generics, they're almost always going to be. But you want to make sure that your medications are covered, especially if you're on brand names. Because sometimes uh, one year a company will cover a brand name. The next year they're only going to cover the generic alternatives or generic equivalents. And so pay attention to the formulary. It's actually the most important part of this. And then we want to look at this. We want to look at the copays. In other words, most medications, you're going to have some kind of a copay. Now, there will be some uh, that will be Tier 1 meds or maybe use mail order uh, on the Tier 1 or Tier 2 meds where there will be a zero copay. But meds that are Tier 2 up are typically going to have a copay. And so you will look at the copay. And the way you can typically decide or determine what that uh, copay is going to be, it's usually based upon the tier of the medication. So you may have a Tier 3 medication at $45. Now, if the medication actual full cost is less than $45, you would not pay the tier price. You would just simply pay the full cost of that medication. So again, we're going to pay attention to what are going to be my out-of-pocket expenses uh, for uh, the medications that I'm going to be covered. All right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to be looking for what is called tier changes. Tier changes. So uh, there could be a medication this year that's covered at a Tier 2 and uh, they bump it to a tier four. Uh, it may be a medication that's a tier three and they bump to a tier five. I've seen this happen before. In fact, I've seen this happen where a tiering change like that changed the monthly copay $150 to $175 every month. And so you don't want to be caught off guard with some kind of a tier change. And again, they'll disclose this uh, within the annual notice of change. All right. And so these are the very important features that you're going to be looking for in that annual notice of change. So be sure to open it up. Now, if we're happy with the changes, they haven't raised the premium much or maybe they even lowered it. Uh, my medications are still covered. I'm still happy with the, the tiers of those uh, meds, the copays. I'm happy with that then you don't have to do anything, all right? So the only reason you do something is if you're dissatisfied with the way that company's perform, maybe their customer service, or they made some kind of change uh, on the plan. And so if you're still happy with the plan, uh, then let the plan automatically renew. There's nothing you have to do. The default mode is always auto renewal, okay? We just want to make sure that if it auto renews, you have done your due diligence to make sure you'll be happy with that plan in 2023. Now, the third feature or the third element that we need to be aware of as we look at uh, moving drug plans uh, is the pharmacy network. Uh, every plan is going to have a couple of pharmacies that would be considered to be preferred. And then they'll also have some that are standard. Now, I will tell you that when it comes to uh, low cost generic medications, there may not be a big difference uh, between the preferred and the standard pricing, but there can be a substantial difference between brand name medications. And so what will happen is they, uh, they, the plan will identify a couple of pharmacies. One plan may say our pharmacy preferred is going to be CVS and Walmart. Okay. And what they're saying is that you can still go to other pharmacies over here, uh, your Walgreens and your maybe grocery stores. But again, that's going to be standard pricing instead of preferred pricing. Uh, another plan may say this, uh, our only preferred pharmacy is Walgreens. 
okay? And you can go anywhere else you'd like to, uh, but uh, Walgreens is the only one going to give you the best pricing. Everybody else on that plan, you can actually go to that network uh, pharmacy, but it will be standard pricing. And so the reason I'm sharing this with you is because as we look at medications, especially those of you that are on several medications, and especially if those are some brand name medication, it is wonderful if you can uh, get your medications from a preferred pharmacy. Now, I've had people say, well, I want to go to X. I don't want to go to, to, to Z. Well, I can just tell you if there's a big price difference between X, Y, and Z, I would go ahead and go to preferred pharmacy and try to save that additional money because sometimes it can be substantial because every plan is going to have a, a network and some are going to give you better prices and other pharmacies are going to be a little bit higher. Now, that takes us into the fourth aspect. And this specifically is for those of you that uh, are insulin-dependent diabetics. And this is called the Senior Savings Model. Now, they actually have been testing this since 2021. And the test has done very well. There's been five different insulin manufacturers that have participated. And uh, as we move forward now into 2023, here's what's going to happen. Uh, any insulin that uh, is being manufactured by the major insulin manufacturers um, can no longer have a copay any higher than $35 a month. Now, what you got to realize is that not every standalone Part D plan and not every Advantage plan that has an embedded drug plan is going to have the senior savings model built within uh, their coverage, okay? So not all plans are going to have this. So if you're an insulin-dependent diabetic, it's in your best interest to make sure that your insulin is going to be at this very favorable uh, price, okay? So not every plan has it, many will, and that just simply means that uh, you'll pay no more than $35 if you're on one of those plans and your insulin is going to be in formulary. So not all insulins are going to be in every formula for sure, but you got to do your due diligence homework to make sure uh, that uh, your insulin is going to be at this low cost because insulin can be very, very expensive. And this $35 would be your fixed, stable copay throughout the entire year. You're not going to pay uh, any more, not going to pay any less. And the good news is uh, the deductible does not apply to any insulin that's in the senior savings model, uh, nor does the coverage gap. If you happen to get to the coverage gap or the donor hole, uh, your copay will not change as it, as it has in years prior. All right, so it's a wonderful thing that happened in 2023. And then lastly, the main goal here is to make sure that you get the very best coverage, meaning you get your meds covered and you get the very best price. All right, so the way you do that, now we have a website that our clients use. It's called MedicareSchoolEnroll.com. Kind of lengthy, uh, but this is our uh, proprietary website that we use to make sure all of our clients uh, have um, access to the very best drug plan that's going to be available for them. And there's other places you can go as well. There's other websites you can visit, and certainly feel free to do that. But ours is MedicareSchoolEnroll.com. And the whole goal of that site is to make sure that we find best costs and best coverage. Now, there's some plans that we choose not to work with. There's other plans that don't work with brokers. Uh, but these are the plans um, uh, that... Uh, we feel like are uh, favorably rated. Uh, they're companies that have proven to uh, provide good service and a good formularies for our clients. Okay, so that's the whole goal, best cost and uh, the very best coverage. Okay, so what happens is this. Uh, when you are looking at drug plans, uh, regardless of what site you do, the first thing that you have to do is uh, everything is usually based upon your zip code and sometimes county, but uh, you'll put your zip code in. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure uh, that you put all your medications in. Now, when I say medications, I'm not talking about supplements and those kind of things, but any kind of medication that you have a prescription for. So put the meds in. And what matters is be sure to give them the exact name. Uh, had a lady today that I was helping out with the plan, and uh, she gave me the brand name, but she wasn't taking the brand name. And there was a significant difference between brand and generic. So be sure to give them the generic. A great example would be um, uh, for thyroid. Uh, the brand name is Synthroid. Uh, the generic is Level Thyroxin. Uh, uh, right now, a generic uh, Lipitor is called the Torvastatin. So you want to be sure to say a Torvastatin. Had one today. Uh, a Crestor was the brand name and um, uh, this rosifostatin was the generic. So my whole point is, whatever you're actually taking, be sure to put the exact name in, and then you wanna give them the dosage and the frequency. So are you taking 10 milligrams, uh, you know, two a day? Or are you taking 40 milligrams, one a day? But whatever the exact dosage and frequency is, be sure um, uh, to put that in, in, in as well. Now I would tell you this, 
if you're taking some things PRN, meaning you don't take them regularly, you just take them as needed. What I would do is you may want to put in the in this um, uh, website, you may want to put in there that you take you know 30 tabs uh, over the whole year. Uh, don't put 30 tabs a month if you're uh, not taking that much. If it's PRN and had one today that was a lady that had migraines and and uh, she was taking a medication for that, but she only takes four tablets a month. And so we put that in. So be very specific. And um, uh, had another situation actually interesting today. Uh, there was a lady that was on uh, albuterol sulfate. It's an inhaler. And so uh, she only uses one of those inhalers once a year. And so we looked at what the plan was going to charge, and we realized we'd get a GoodRx coupon for half that price. So we didn't even put it in her formulary. So just know that, folks, one medication uh, could alter the plan that's going to be recommended. So be sure that you're very, very accurate when you put in your medication information. All right, so it's going to be based upon zip code and then your medications. And then again, your pharmacy, where are you going to go? And then uh, most of the sites will give you maybe two or three different options, but put, put in a couple of those, maybe CVS or Walgreens or Walmart or wherever you go, the grocery store to get your prescriptions. But let that thing shop two or three of those uh, pharmacies. So why? We can find a preferred pharmacy and see the price difference between those. All right. Then you can also uh, determine whether it's worth it to, uh, to change pharmacies or not. So we're going to update it with this. Uh, and then with that information, what it's going to do, it's going to shop all the plans. All the plans are going to be in your zip code. And I mean, literally within seconds, it will take those plans and it will put them in order of cost and coverage, cost and coverage. Now, here's what I want you to realize. What you want to look at is the annual cost of the plan, annual cost. And that includes 12 months of premium, uh, uh, any deductible, any co-pays that you have. If you go to the coverage gap, all those numbers are going to be in there. These systems are wonderful today, but look at the annual cost. Don't just look at the premium cost. Now, the premium cost matters for sure. But I had a situation I looked at today. Get this. One plan, uh, the very top plan, had a premium of $72.80. The second plan had a premium of $7. But when it came to annual cost, this was just the premium only because on, on, the, on those uh, medications, they all had a zero copay. Yeah, seventy-two or an eighty cent a month premium, and so that ends up being you know eight hundred and some dollars a year. Uh, over here, we had a lower uh, premium, seven dollars a month, but the medications uh, were like a thousand eighty dollars. So here, I paid a higher premium here, lower, but here my medications were lower. And so the whole point is this: the annual cost is going to matter. And then be sure all your medication are covered. It'll show you the annual cost, and it'll uh, take. Uh, those plans and it's going to put them in order of cost and coverage and then once you decide what plan is best for you then you can um, uh, add that to the cart and you can actually enroll in those plans yourself hey if you're looking for someone to help you hold your hand through this entire medicare enrollment process we would love to do that our team is standing by to help you we help about a thousand people a month go from medicare confusion to having their plans enrolled and it takes probably less than an hour go to the pinned comment below and you can book your appointment now let me just give you one rule of thumb let's suppose that you're on a plan this year uh, that uh, when it goes to the ratings and maybe your plan is uh, two instead of one. Like last year, it may have been number one, now it's number two. Folks, if there's only maybe $50 a year difference, I probably wouldn't even waste my time changing plans for $50 for the whole year because you may have to change pharmacies and get your doctor to rewrite prescriptions. Those kind of things happen. But if your plan is still within the money that you're comfortable of, then you can stay on the plan. It will automatically renew. But if there's a difference of two, $300 for the whole year, if you're me, I'd be changing the plan and I'd go on the new plan uh, for 2023. Now, whatever you're planning on right now is yours for 2022. So we make the change, what? October 15th through December the 7th, okay? So we got these seven weeks to make that switch. And so you do the enrollment during this period of time and the new plan that you pick based upon uh, your shopping and your comparing, uh, that plan will go into effect in January 1 and you'll be on that for all of 2023. So you got the seven weeks to do it. Don't put it off. Do your comparing, your shopping, looking at the websites and decide what's going to be the best for you. So look at all these five different features and then you'll be able to decide which will be the best drug plan for you in 2023.